Welcome to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Well, the fallout continues after President Joe Biden's embarrassingly bad debate performance with many media figures and even one Democratic lawmaker calling on Biden to drop out of the race. But here's how MSNBC is spinning things. So what was different? A little more sleep? Perhaps it was an event during the day, rather at night. On debate night, 90 minutes, starting at 9 p.m., Joe Biden was fresh off back-to-back -back trips to Europe, first to Normandy for the 80th anniversary of D-Day and a state dinner with President Macron, and then to Italy for the G7, followed by a flight across 12 time zones to L.A. for a fundraiser with former President Barack Obama. Just 33 hours later, he was headed back to the East Coast. The debate was also two weeks after his son Hunter was convicted on three felony gun charges and faces prison time. President Biden painfully told America he would not pardon his son. I really question his schedule. It makes me angry. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tried to distract from Biden's obvious cognitive decline by suggesting that actually it's Donald Trump who has dementia. Let's watch. My people are very much Biden, Kamala Harris, and l l this is an opportunity for Joe Biden to go out there and show he has the stamina and the rest. And by the way, while the press, and for some reason they don't, there are uh, uh, health care professionals who think that, that uh, Trump has dementia, that his connection, uh, his thoughts do not go together. Uh, not only that he just lies, he doesn't even know the truth. So if we're just talking about mental acuity, let's be fair about it. I don't think Tom Friedman thinks that, jo uh, that Donald Trump should be president of the United States. And uh, you know, while, uh, while he may be saying we're enablers, we see Joe Biden up close. We know how uh, attuned he is to the issues, how informed he is. I like how Nancy Pelosi essentially did a classic Trump move there. Well, many people are saying <laughs> that, you know, I'm not citing anyone specifically here, but Trump is the one who has uh, dementia. I mean, it's so laughable. You can disagree with Trump. Um, you can think that he exaggerates various points, as I believe he did in the debate. But it's not in the same category of what we're talking about with Joe Biden, which is an ognitive, uh, obvious cognitive decline, an ongoing difference in... Uh, in behavior, in performance, when he's asked to talk about policy issues or when he faces anything remotely confrontational in terms of questioning. Yes, he can read a speech off a teleprompter, but when he faces questioning that was, I mean, not even that hostile. Uh, Jake Tapper and Dana Bash did a great job asking questions. They didn't interrupt and really go toe to toe. Um, it was a little bit hostile and he just totally, totally failed and everyone saw it. Can you imagine what it would have been like if it were a true debate where the microphones were not cut off in between answers and Trump was actually able to grill him? I, I mean, the man would have fallen apart even more. Yeah. And just to pick apart a little bit of Mika Brzezinski's defense <laughs> there, um, the guy had eight days in isolation at Camp David after that international trip she's talking about to solely prepare for the debate. He did not have a single public event beforehand. I went back and looked at the former president's schedule ahead of the 2020 debate and ahead of the first debate, he uh, had actually held an event for the nomination of Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court, I think two days prior. So, so the one where everybody got COVID? Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then he couldn't go to the second yeah, debate. Yeah. Um, and then talking about, well, his son Hunter also just, you know, got convicted of a felony two weeks ago. So did Trump. Like, I, just, I just don't understand why they're still doubling down on this insanity of just gaslighting the American people repeatedly about Biden's obvious mental and physical issues. Well, and, and with the travel schedule, like, look, I get it. That is a really busy travel schedule. I see why you would be tired out now the debate was many days later. But like, yeah, that's that's pretty exhausting. That's a lot. Um, that's part of the job. That's right. like a fundamental responsibility of being president or being like secretary of state. It, the jobs that require tons of travel across the United States, it's a 
big, very uh, horizontal country, and, uh, and also abroad to Europe to talk about very sensitive and important issues about global security, the security of Europe, given what's happened with Russia and Ukraine, the security of the Middle East. It is a physically demanding job, and that is why it is valid for so many American people in even a non-ideological sense, like putting policy aside to wonder whether Joe Biden, given his state, is capable of doing this job for the rest of this term, let alone another four years. I have a hard time, even, you know, putting policy differences aside, I have a hard time picturing Biden doing the job for another four years. Yeah, exactly. And if you go back to the prior two presidencies and compare foreign travel, Biden's foreign travel is significantly pared down from what his predecessors were doing. So even then, he's already doing a, a slightly less percentage of the job as he should be compared to what we know is the modern standard. And I think the Democrats uh, are in a between a rock and a hard place here, obviously, because Kamala Harris is very unpopular. Yeah. There's a significant swath, I think, of the Democratic activist class that would be very angry if she were passed over for another candidate that might be more popular. But even then, now the Biden campaign is sending around these polls to don donors who are rightfully concerned about his ability to just make it through the election, let alone another four years, pointing out that Biden polls better against Trump than any of those people. Yeah. Of course, that's pre-debate, so things could change, well, but... Yes, and things have to actually this, there's a poll that came out just before we sat down in these chairs that I was looking at um, that actually had, this was good news for Harris, actually. The poll had Harris as the top performing person against, uh, against Trump. So Harris was at, was two points better against Trump than Biden in this latest, I think it was CNN's poll, pre, uh, post-debate poll. The, uh, they also polled um, Buttigieg, Newsom and Whitmer, mm -hmm. who were who were they were like they were forty three. Biden is forty three. I think Whitmer might have been forty two. Harris was forty five. So that was actually good news for Kamala Harris. You're right that over the course of his presidency, that's always been Joe Biden's greatest greatest asset is that Kamala Harris polls worse <laughs> than him. But that calculation might be changing now. Now, of course, if Newsom or Buttigieg or Whitmer, who's basically totally unknown to people. I know who she is because I'm from Michigan and I don't care for her policies She's at awful. all. Um, you, you can make an argument that if they were more exposed on a national scale, they could pull even better if they fared you know, well in a, having been vetted by the national media or even worse because they right. haven't really been vetted yet. So you can make an argument that they're more of political unknowns than certainly than Joe Biden, whose numbers are never going to get any better and can only get worse. So, you know, I don't know. I've, I've been reluctant to, to think it's just in a pure political strategy necessarily a good idea to swap out Biden. But at this point, it seems like, it would, I think it'd be a huge risk, but not risking something is coming close to guaranteeing defeat. Right, it's, and it's, I think they're sort of testing what the public's reaction to a potential swap out would be because we've started to see some very low level, sort of no name Democratic congressmen float the idea that Biden yes. is not fit for the job. I mean, like Mike Quigley, nobody knows who that is. He was giving an interview in which he suggested that it might be the right time for Biden to leave. There was another Democratic congressman whose name is escaping me right now, who outright called on him to step yeah, out I of the race. Yeah. Um, but they're both, you know, people who wouldn't warrant a lot of national attention. I kind of thought to myself, who told them to do that, to test the reaction, <laughs> and, right? Yeah. And, and then, the, but there's also all of these roadblocks to replacing Biden, the most important of which is that he has to willingly step aside. And his wife, and I, I've, I know people have been saying, oh, well, don't blame the wife. Yeah. But you actually do get to blame Dr. Jill in this situation. <laughs> She's flying her own appeal to heaven flag. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, I mean, she she has this Vogue cover come out yeah. with like the worst timing ever where she says she's sticking by her man and they're going to fight till the end. And then immediately the first paragraph in the actual Vogue profile, which is unrelated, which was before the debate, they're talking about how powerful it can feel to ride in a motorcade and have the world essentially stop for you. And the mask is really off for her. It's become mm. very clear that she really loves the idea of being first lady, the power and the potential wealth that is associated with it. The Biden family as well 
tell Hunter Biden apparently in a lot of these meetings at the White House and with the Biden campaign. Yes, it was reported by the New York Times that yes. he's a mo- um, emerged, uh, excuse me, as like the most vocal supporter of his dad's reelection within the family. And I'm like, Hunter Biden actually. <laughs> might really have a good and invested reason exactly. for Joe Biden to run again, in, or to certainly not step aside immediately if he's hoping to get a kind of pardon or commutation if that ever becomes relevant. Exactly. Um, so they don't listen yeah. to him. So they have to convince him to step aside. The family is saying, no way in hell, we're not leaving. And then they would have to figure out who to replace him with at a convention and acknowledge the fact that they are directly ignoring the will of the primary voters who, yeah. I mean, their primary process and was sort already, of. <laughs> sort of, but I mean, their primary process was already not very real anyway. So it's just going to look terrible. And then one final point, sorry, I know I'm talking a lot, but, Go for it. but uh, Stephen Miller, the former advisor to Trump, I thought made a really good point, which is if the Democrats really think that Biden is not well enough to continue on in this election, then that's a tacit acknowledgement that he's not well enough to be president, which is directly to your Mm -hmm. point. And that gives the Republicans a great argument to invoke the 25th Amendment, right? Mm. Because if he's not well enough to complete the campaign, he's not well enough to be president right now, you have to invoke. Yeah, I mean, if, if he's going to decide not to run and the move is Kamala Harris, there's actually very little reason strategically not to, I guess, just resign and have her even momentarily have the, whatever powers of actual incumbency. Actually, she can hold press conferences as the president. She can introduce people to the idea that she is the president. That might be the move, actually, if it does come to that. But we've seen no indication so far that Joe Biden, who is the one that actually makes the decision, now we hear all, you probably hear this all the time too, they won't let him. They're swapping him out. There's no they. He (laughs) is the they. No one can make him do this. He's the leader of the Democratic Party. There is no curtain behind which the real power lurks. Joe Biden is the leader of the Democratic Party, and he has to be persuaded. He has to voluntarily do it, or else there will be, there's no one, there's no one who puts, you know, the cane out and yanks him off stage. Well, even if there were they, just for hypothetical yeah. sake, I mean, if you subscribe to the theory in the tablet magazine from Obama's biographer that he's running the White House from Kalorama. Obama is. That, that was the oh, theory. Right. Um, but, it, but if that's the case, why would Obama not want Biden to just get another yeah. term? If this is his third term, then wouldn't mm. he just want Biden in as his puppet to do a fourth term? Like, there's not really an incentive, I think, for any of the they to yeah. remove him anyway, mm. unless they really think somebody else could win more than Biden can, which I don't think they believe that. All right, stick around. We've got more free media right after this. 